2021. My channel is The Liberty Lion, and this is Jen West. And today I want to talk to you about mandates, private property, and federal property. And I want to explain to you why so many people have it wrong when it comes to describing uh, mandates and who has the right to make mandates law and who has the right to force the mandates on who. So a mandate is something that places a command on people. So this command, because it's a command, it applies only to certain people. That's what a command is. Those people are under whoever can make the mandate. So the people within the federal government must comply with the mandate. The people within the state must comply with the mandate. But the problem is, is what state? Okay, so we're going to talk about what state is and why the governor of Texas, Abbott, can write a mandate controlling public or private businesses. We have to understand first that there are lands controlled by the state and there are lands controlled by the federal government. But there was a twist during the um, Civil War by Lincoln. Lincoln created a twist in perception that altered people's understanding of what the state is because there's actually two states in Texas and there's two states in every state. But Lincoln wanted there to be only one. And Lincoln wanted that one state to be under federal control. So he used the military to overtake the sovereign state, the independent and free sovereign state and place it under federal control. So let's go back to the time right after the Constitution. In the con congressional records, the way the federal government created states for themselves to which they controlled was to ask the sovereign state for some of its lands. And with those lands, they had to cede lawmaking authority. The states did not sell the entire state to the federal government. They did not sell or give up the right to make laws for the sovereign people in the sovereign state. That was Lincoln's takeover. So what did the Constitution do? What the Constitution did was it allowed joint ownership of some small portions of land in every state to build a military force on. And the Constitution not acknowledges the law of nations within it the original portion of the Constitution acknowledges the law of nations, the LAW, not LAWS, which means the law of nations is a foundation for nations and their laws. So one of the foundation of the net nation laws are to have a military or a mechanism of defense, D-E-F-E-N-C-E, -E -E, as written in the Constitution, not S-E, is for these um, nations to be able to create a military to protect itself, to protect its lands and its people so that they can go about their business and do their private stuff. 
and everything that sovereign people do is private. Everything. The money they use is private. The land they live on is private. The movement of their goods is private. Their roads are private. Their businesses are private. Their family lives are private. Everything in the sovereign community is private. Everything governmental is public. And what that means is that it's up for scrutiny. It's to be viewed. It's supposed to be transparent. That's what it means when you're in the public eye. There are no secrets for national safety. So the Constitution was the acknowledgement of a law of nations where a nation must have a military to defend its lands. That's what the Constitution does. And all the states agreed to it which made, made all the states come under one national government. But the Constitution didn't create a national government, it only created the military. So when the states agreed to ratify the Constitution, what they agreed to was to give up some lands inside the state, inside their own particular territories, to be used for military purposes, and that's defense with a C, again, as it's written in the Constitution, not an S, the way the government writes it now. Two different words. So this military force is restricted to the federal lands, and along with selling the federal lands, it had to also cede jurisdiction and that's in um, the early titles written and given a positive law citation that you can find online. And in the congressional records, the way they would write it would be whenever the, the federal government, in other words, the states all together, would purchase federal lands, as they would say something like, Virginia, not state of Virginia, ceded some lands on the western portion of its territory to the United States to erect it or bring it into under federal control for defense purposes. So Virginia would cede some lands that the United States agreed to purchase to the United States. So they see the Virginia ceded some lands to the United States to erect it into state of Virginia, the federal state. So Virginia is the sovereign state and it gave up a little bit of lands to the federal government to bring it in under federal control and that federal state under federal control is called state of Virginia. So all the federal lands inside sovereign Virginia are called state of Virginia. It was the same with Tennessee and North Carolina in that same congressional record in about 1789 or 1798. And the same was true for Texas in 1836, the sovereign people of the whole territory of Texas created a government for themselves. They had a constitution. And they, in that constitution, they did two form, two things, which was just what a constitution does. It does two things. It creates a force for military, for defense, for defending what you have. And it um, establishes the form of government. So the 1836 Constitution for Texas named its form Republic of Texas. So the sovereign people created a government for themselves and called that government State of Texas. Once 
Republic of Texas, I'm sorry, they call themselves Republic of Texas. Once the Republic of Texas was created into a state, it could then join the Union, the Federal Union. But to do that, they had to take some of their lands and sell it, in which case Texas didn't sell it, it uh, leased it <clears throat> to the federal government to build forts on so that along with all the other states, they could defend themselves together as one large military force. Those federal lands in Texas are called the state of Texas. If you go to Governor Abbott's um, website, his official website, it says on there that he's the governor of the state of Texas. So what happened to the Republic of Texas? After the people formed a government for themselves and called it Republic of Texas, they didn't have a building. They didn't have a state capitol building. But they joined the Union and erected in it, in Texas, in the Republic of Texas, another state called State of Texas for the military areas, the federal areas, the posts. The capitol building was built after ratification of the federal constitution. So State of Texas was erected but on the rotunda floor, it says Republic of Texas. So if the Republic of Texas no longer existed when it became a member of the Union and the Capitol building was built after the erection of State of Texas, why did they put Republic of Texas on the rotunda floor? That's because in the 1860s during the Civil War, Lincoln decided he was going to take over the Republic of Texas. He was going to take over all the southern states and force them back into the Union, but in such a way where he was going to end the Republic of Texas and all, this, all the governments created by the people, the sovereign people of the states. He was going to end them by taking them over and forcing them back into the Union and making the entire sovereign state a federal state under federal control. So is Abbott the governor of the sovereign areas of land or is he the governor of state of Texas? Or is he both? If you go to his website, it does not say Republic of Texas and State of Texas Governor. It only says State of Texas Governor. And now they're moving towards just using the word Texas. The people of Texas and the military of Texas. And when they refer to the laws, now they're referring to just the Texas laws and not the state of Texas laws. So there is definitely a difference between the two, yet they're acting as though there isn't. So you have federal lands and then you have sovereign lands. The federal government originally according to the original constitution was never giving never given control over the sovereign lands the sovereign people maintained control over the sovereign lands and the federal government maintained maintained control over the federal lands and the federal government was allowed to make laws for the federal lands and the people on the federal lands and for people to become federal citizens, they had to go into a court of record <clears throat> and apply. 
they had to become citizens of the United States, which is a federal citizen. So when Greg Abbott, Abbott, governor of state of Texas, writes a mandate to control private businesses, he's writing it for the state of Texas, which is the federal lands. So let's take a business such as McDonald's because there are lots of McDonald's on federal lands and there are McDonald's off federal lands. In order for McDonald's to work on federal lands, they have to apply they have to register. They register with the federal government or the state of Texas government or the state of Virginia. So they have to register in the state and they have to register with the federal government. So it's a private business that agrees specifically to follow all the federal laws. And the federal laws extend to the states by way of the federal lands and the session of jurisdiction to the federal government by the sovereign state. <clears throat> but when Lincoln took over the sovereign states and made them all federal, he changed the perception, the perception of, of what the federal government had control over. And so people now, they think that the federal government has control over everything, but what Lincoln did was outside the Constitution. And anything outside the Constitution is void, not voidable. Meaning it's automatically void, not you don't have to go to court and have it voided by a judge. It's just void. It's outside their office. They're impersonating officers anytime they act in their office outside the Constitution. And everything they do is illegal. What Lincoln did when he took over the states, the sovereign states, was illegal. Therefore, the Republic of Texas still exists. And the state of Texas and the governor of the state of Texas is only over the federal lands. So in Texas, when Abbott wrote his mandate, because he can only mandate, which is an order, those people who registered to do work on the federal lands inside Texas. And then they come under federal control, even if they're a private business. So do you understand? Greg Abbott, the governor of the federal lands, can mandate private businesses to follow the government laws on the federal lands. If they don't like it, they can leave the federal lands and only do business in the sovereign area of the state. It's the same with Biden's mandates. He can only mandate, and I think this has been made fairly clear in um, the talks of other people that they've done. He can only mandate all the federal areas. He can put out a mandate to mandate all the federal areas. Governor Abbott can put out a mandate to mandate Texas federal areas. But Governor Abbott acting as governor of the state of Texas cannot put out a mandate to regulate, to use federal laws to regulate sovereign people not on federal lands, the sovereign people in the Republic of Texas. He cannot do that. Just like Biden cannot do that. He cannot put out a mandate to regulate people not on federal lands. Now we can get into Supreme Court decisions, but if you look at the Constitution, 
the Supreme Court decisions are supposed to be written by people who are of the sovereign area of the state because there's no requirement for them to become citizens of the United States or federal persons. So all the Supreme Court decisions that have been handed down since at least Lincoln's time were handed down by people who became federal citizens. And so they would, of course, write opinions siding with the federal government. This allowed for the enlarging of the federal government and allowed for Lincoln to do what he did with impunity because there was no one to stop him. But if you look at the, at the federal constitution, the Supreme Court judges are supposed to have good behavior. They're not required to be federal citizens. They're not required to be citizens of the federal lands. And not being required to do that, then they must have been the only other people on, on uh, the lands of, of America, which are sovereign people. So the judges are supposed to be sovereign, and then their Supreme Court decisions would be siding with the sovereign people to keep the federal government in its proper place. But since Lincoln took over and everybody thought that they then were federal citizens and he, and he paved the way for us to be issued um, birth certificates and then later on for, for the president to issue social security numbers, they basically made every sovereign person a federal person illegally, but with our consent, but with our consent illegally because they're still acting outside of their oath of office, which means they're impersonating officers. I saw um, one of the GOP people being interviewed by Judge Andrew Napolitano recently in a video that's on YouTube. And she basically was saying it doesn't matter that Biden's president, even if he wasn't elected. Well, the election process matters. And if he's trying to make laws for the entire country, he's doing it outside of his office. If he wasn't properly elected by the sovereign people, then he's impersonating an officer. If the people who are voting are supposed to only be federal people on federal lands, then how is he supposing to mandate for people off federal lands? So we, we enter into a very um, messy situation where most people don't understand on and off federal lands. And they believe that everything the federal government does is, is to rule over them and make laws for them in their lives. And it's just not the case. And they show us in many of their, their writings. Now I want you to notice here, it says for official use only. This is from 1962. I'm assuming that it wasn't supposed to get out into the private, the hands of the private people, the private class of people, the sovereigns, because they have a perception that they allow people con to continue to have, and that's that um, the federal government rules over everyone. But if you look in this book and you go down to this form they have here, here here's this word, it says code, for the type of jurisdiction, jurisdiction right here, and code, so this is jurisdictional code. You have one, two, three, four, and five. So here is the code for defense that's in the Constitution. Everything else is basically, okay, so this is federal government only. Two is federal and state, basically. And three are just contracts. Three, four, five are just contracts. 
and they basically have no jurisdiction over the sovereign people of the state and from any of these codes. Any None of these types of jurisdiction gives the federal government control over sovereign people and their state that they created for themselves. Because sovereign people create a government for themselves. They make up a state by way of their population, and once they get the numbers, they make a state government for themselves. That's how it works in America. Now here's from Title IV, Flag and Seal, Seat of Government and the States, Chapter 4, Section 119, Electronic Database for Nationwide Standard Numerical or Numeric Jurisdictional Codes. And here's Section 119. So what am I showing you here? I'm showing you that the federal government was ceded jurisdiction over federal lands, and that's in the Constitution, and that's been written about in many reports. In many of their reports, it's been explained how to interpret the laws. Okay, the laws apply, the federal laws apply on the federal lands only. And not only have they written books about it to help you understand, to help themselves understand, but they have, they have laws on it. This is a Title IV. So what do they do? Whenever the federal government buys lands, they have to assign a code to it called its a jurisdictional code. Here it is. I was simply looking up, searching the word standard, and I came across it, which... I've been sending FOIAs to the GSA office, which this manual is for the GSA office. I've been sending FOIAs to them trying to find, trying to get copies of the forms that they used in 1962 that help people understand where the federal government has power and where it does not. So here are the forms. This is a report of legislative jurisdiction over federal areas within the states. Now, every time I send a FOIA to them, they tell me that they don't know what I'm talking about. The last time I sent a FOIA to them, they said, we're tired of answering your question. We don't know what you're talking about, and we don't have your answers. So stop asking us. That was the last one they sent to me, and I think it was in an email. Okay, so summary report. What they do is they write down the address of the federal area inside the state. Okay, they write down whether this area is exclusive, concurrent. You know, what code is it? One, two, three, four, and five. So one is the only one that's in the Constitution. Two, three, four, and five are basically just contracts outside the Constitution. So contracts still have to comply with the Constitution. Contracts by the federal government with the state cannot go outside the Constitution because otherwise the federal government is acting as an imposter. The people in federal positions who have an oath have to stay within the confines of the Constitution. Otherwise, they're acting outside their oath of office. If they're acting outside their oath of office, they're acting without any authority at all, which means they're impersonating an officer. And this proves it. Unconstitutional laws are void, not voidable. You don't have to go to court to have them voided. They're void already. So provide an electronic database to a home service provider or a state does not provide such an electronic database to home service providers, then the designated database provider may provide an electronic database to a home service provider. So they have databases. It doesn't matter what they're using this database for, but they have databases with jurisdictional, numeric jurisdictional codes 
within them. And these are the numeric jurisdictional codes, whether they have authority or whether they don't. Whether they purchase the lands for defense, according to the Constitution, or whether they didn't. So let's take a little bit of a deeper dive into this. The Constitution allows for the federal government to make contracts with the states and with individuals. But those contracts, because the federal government only has authority on federal lands, the contracts they make are naturally supposed to be for work on the federal lands. So when they were first building these forts, these forts had no water, they had no sewage, they had no restrooms, they had no buildings on them. If they did have some buildings on them, they didn't have all the necessary buildings because some states had already started erecting their forts, like such as Texas did, and it gave those areas up to the federal government for the continued erection of the forts. And this was sort of a socialist, socialistic system inside of a capitalistic system, just like we have republics inside of republics and state of Texas, federal states inside of uh, sovereign states. So what they did was they created um, contracts with people to do work on the federal land. So they would hire architects and the architects had to, do, to go to the federal lands and they would have an office there and they would do their work. And this is the way it was at Washington DC also because they hired a contractor as an architect who I believe happened to be one of the friends of one of the founders who wrote the constitution, of course. And he was to work to um, do the drawings and help build the uh, buildings in Washington, D.C. That was his job as a contractor. So nowadays, fast forward to now, if you want to do work with the federal government on the federal land, you have to register. You have to register with the state, which is the secretary of the state of Texas or state of Texas secretary's office to do work with state of Texas on the federal lands. If McDonald's wants to work on the federal lands, they are a private corporation, but they're registering with the state of Texas saying that's going to abide by all the federal laws and all the state of Texas federal laws. Because the state of Texas um, has requirements also for the federal lands. But ultimately, the ultimate power is the federal government for the federal lands. Their laws are the ultimate, are the, like the top jurisdiction because the state ceded jurisdiction over those federal areas in the states. But that doesn't mean that uh, the federal people don't have to comply with some other laws. It's just that state of Texas laws come first. So it's not that Republic of Texas sheriff doesn't have authority on the federal lands. It's that when he goes there, his authority is lesser than the authority of the federal government. Now, if the federal government has a sheriff on their lands, they can come off the federal lands, but only to issue a summons to the sheriff of the, of the Republic of Texas, the sovereign area, non-federal land, for someone who was on federal land who committed a crime and then left the federal, federal lands for the sovereign lands. So if a military person on one of the posts in Texas, being a part of the state of Texas, a federal citizen, commits a crime on federal lands and then runs off the federal lands, the MPs on the federal lands can bring a summons 
to the sheriff of the sovereign state, Republic of Texas, and ask for them to go find them and bring them back so that they can stand for their crime. This has happened over and over and over again, even now today and in other countries. The military police cannot just come off federal lands and start arresting people, whether they're federal citizens or not. They have to ask for permission. And the state has to say, okay, I agree. We'll, we'll do that for you. We'll, we'll go get them and bring them back. Because they don't have to. But they have to because it's an agreement that they have with the federal government. The states have with the federal government. It's one of the agreements. And it works the same way. If a sovereign person runs onto the federal lands after committing a crime in the sovereign state, the sovereign state can send sheriffs to the federal lands, ask to come on the federal lands, and issue a summons for that person to be returned to the sovereign state because they, let's say it was a military person who um, robbed a store or you know, robbed somebody's house or stole a car or raped someone, which happens a lot, and even in foreign countries. So they would have to ask permission to have that person returned. And the federal government would have to agree. And then they would return that person. If they found them on the federal lands, they would return them to the sovereign people of the state. So <clears throat> there are some agreements between the federal government and other countries where if a federal person commits a crime in their country that they will um, be sent to a federal prison and not um, the country's prison. But some countries don't agree to that. They say, no, if your federal people come off the federal lands and commit a crime in our country, we're going to send them to our prison. We're going to... We're going to... Um, hold them and try them and send them to our prison. It works the same way in America. If a federal person comes off the federal lands and commits a crime, then he has to be um, tried either on the federal lands or in the state. It depends on the agreements. Okay, so when a business wants to go on the federal lands and do business on the federal lands, they sort of, even though they're still a private company or corporation, they agree to follow all the federal la laws while on federal lands. They agree to it. So they register. They register to do business on the federal lands with the federal government. Okay, so once um, they're on those federal lands and they come under the mandates. So G Greg Abbott, when he's saying that even if you work for a private company, your employees have to be vaccinated. Why would he do that? Because he's talking about the private companies and those employees working on the federal lands who come into contact with the military people. If they're coming in contact with military people and they're saying that non-vaccinated people are contagious, then they need to be vaccinated so that they don't get the military members sick. Okay, so he can mandate those people who agreed, okay, and all their employees who also agree. Once you're on the federal lands, you come under federal laws. Can, man, can Abbott mandate for people off federal lands? No, because he is the governor of the state of Texas and the state of Texas are the federal lands. No matter what Lincoln did, no matter what people's perceptions are, the laws are the laws and the constitution is the constitution. And they say what they say and how many people do you know go and actually read the laws and read the Constitution? And if you have read the Constitution, you may not have understood everything that it said in the way that it was meant and all the um, 
all the little um, intricacies involved, such as jurisdiction and comity and what lands are. Because when people read the Constitution and they see the law of the land and they think the Constitution is the law of the entire country, all the states and all the sovereign areas, and it is not. And there are a number of reports and writings that say otherwise. And there are a number of reports and writings that will try to lead you to believe that the federal government has control over the entire country. And I can tell you that it's likely, very likely, that most of these were written by people who want a big government. But it doesn't make sense because how can you be in a free country and not be free? How can you be sovereign and not be sovereign? How can you be independent and not be independent? Free, sovereign, and independent. How can you create a government for yourself and not have a government for yourself? How can you alter or abolish it when at any time they can call you a, a DT? And I'll put that in the description. Because it's their perception that they're trying to get you to have, that they have successfully gotten people to have, is a lie. The state of Texas or the state of Virginia or the state of Tennessee is not the entire state. And a friend pointed out to me that in Ohio, there is no state of Ohio. It's just an Ohio driver's license. And I said, yes, but what did you show to get the license as your form of identification, your proof of identification? He said, nothing. I said, that's not true. You have to fill out an application. He said, no, you just, you just get one. And I said, no, originally you have to say that you're a citizen of the United States, meaning you're a federal citizen on federal lands regulated by the federal government. And that puts you under their state of Ohio on their federal land. So when you go and you get a driver's license and you claim to be a federal citizen, you're getting a federal driver's license, no matter if it says Ohio, state of Ohio. If you use your social security card, that social security card is for federal citizens, not sovereign. Sovereign people are not enumerated. Sovereign people are not counted by the federal government. And if you think that the Constitution is for you and that the Constitution gives the federal government to count you in the census or to regulate you or put you into commerce and put your, your address into commerce and tax you, then you're misunderstanding the Constitution. Because the law of the land is the law of the federal lands. The Constitution is for the creation of a military to protect all the sovereign lands. If the entire if the entire country is a, under federal control, then who are they controlling? Why are they there? There's nothing to control. There is no freedom to control. There is no freedom to protect. There's no independence to protect because nobody's independent if we're all under the federal government. Nobody's sovereign if we're all under the federal government. Nobody is free if we're all under the federal government. Only the federal government can bind itself and the people who agree by oath to be members of it and become citizens of it, which are citizens of the United States, because the United States is not the entire country. The United States are all the federal lands controlled by the seat of government, who are representatives sent by the sovereign states to protect the sovereign states. And they're not doing their jobs. And here's another thing, they keep the, the civilians in Congress and the presidents keep blaming, oh, it's the media. Well, wait a minute, Biden says, you know, Trump said it was the media's fault and Biden issues a mandate trying to tell everybody, everybody that they have to get a, a V. But Biden was only given the power over the Fed, the federal areas. 
So there is no mandate for free people. There can't be. It goes against logic. It goes against reason. It's like a, um, two very opposite things trying to be made into one of the same. They're not the same. Sovereign people are not federal citizens. Sovereign people are not on federal lands. Sovereign people are off federal lands. And people in service to the sovereign are on the federal lands. And then in some cases, they allow sovereign people to come on the lands, be under federal control, no longer in their private capacity because they're on federal lands and they're in service to then the military. So if you don't want to get a V, then leave the federal lands. And understand that you're not mandated because a mandate is, is uh, something that allows the government to use force against you. Sovereign people, there's no force that can be used against sovereign people by the federal government or the state governments because that which you create, you control. Our states, our sovereign states, the Republic of Texas, Virginia, Tennessee, all these sovereign states are supposed to control the federal government, but the federal government took them over. They altered the perception. So we need to go back and, and re-understand and wake up and know that we are not under federal law. We are not under federal control. We are not under federal mandate. We are not federal citizens. We are not of the United States or of our state. Let's talk for a second about amendments. There were two or three amendments passed in the 80 years after the signing of the Constitution. After Lincoln took over in about a hundred years, there were around 13. And most of those were an effort to aid in the misunderstanding of the true intent of the Constitution, such as federal citizens are naturally also state citizens. Because originally, Federal citizens were said to be not state citizens. So Lincoln, in an effort to um, allow for the corporations to take over, he took over the states, and then they claim eminent domain, and they claim commerce, and they claim taxes, and they claim to be able to issue us our sovereign, our sovereign people currency to use, their currency, all lies, all lies to change your idea of what the Constitution was or is. And we need to go back. We need to go back and understand what the true intent of the Constitution was and that the federal government and the state of which are the federal areas inside the state, has no jurisdiction or authority over free, sovereign, and independent people not on federal lands. Now you hear me saying all this, now go back and read the Constitution. Go to um, this website here, uscode.house, Office of the Law Revision Council, United States Codes, and you can search Sometimes they call it jurisdictional status. It's funny, it didn't come up. Maybe I spelled it wrong. G-U-R-I-S-D-I-C-T-I-O-N-A-L code. It's in here. Jurisdictional codes. Let's go codes. There it is. Title IV. Now let's look here. Title IV is a positive law which means the whole title is a law. Title II, Congress, not a law. It's not a law. On or off federal lands, it's not a law. 
And I believe it's because the people sitting in Congress are supposed to be military because the requirement in the Constitution is they have to have so many years as being a citizen of the United States. And in the old laws, to be a citizen of the United States, you had to go to a federal court and apply, and then you lived on the federal lands. Now, civilians on federal lands are called American citizens. Military on federal lands are called citizens of the United States. So if representatives, senators, and president are supposed to be citizens of the United States for so many years, that tells me that they're supposed to have so many years of military service before they can even get to the seat of government to start making laws for the federal lands, which are the military areas. Title VI, domestic securities, not a positive law. Agriculture, not a law. Aliens and nationality, not a law. Banks and banking, not a law. Let's talk about this for a second. Okay, because Title 26 is tied to banks and banking. People think that Title 26 gives the government the right to uh, federally tax everyone's income. It doesn't. Because it's not a law, first of all. Title 12 is not a law. Title 26 is not a law. There's no positive law citation in there. You have to be careful because these are slippery little fuckers. In Title 23 highways, they, they, they have an asterisk right here, which means it's a positive law. But inside here, there is no positive law citation required by Title 1, Chapter 3, Section 204A. You can read that for yourself. Title 4, Flag, Sill, and Seat of Government is a law. Chapter 4, the states, income tax, section 106, jurisdiction of United States over federal areas, the federal government over the federal areas, taxation infecting federal employees, income tax, who pays an income tax by law, federal employees, that's who because they work and live on federal lands. Limitation of state income tax of certain pension income of federal employees, okay? I think in chapter five, it also has, it is chapter, not chapter five, title five, organization and employees. I think somewhere in here, there's also a section on income tax. I'm not sure where you can probably maybe find it. Okay, an allowance maybe. Human capital. Nature of payment. They get paid by the federal government. Federal employees are required to have direct deposit private people off federal lands are not required to have direct deposit, are not required to have a social security number, are not required to have a birth certificate, are not required to have a driver's license, are not required to have a mariner license, are not required to do anything by the federal government unless you go and you work on federal lands or you're traveling onto the federal lands or you're bringing in shipments to the federal lands. So banks and banking, now we go over here. Banks and banking is not in the Constitution. Therefore, their jurisdictional code is going to be by contract with the state. Outside the Constitution, there is no law. It's void, not voidable. It doesn't have any force. When they try to make laws for you outside the Constitution in their official office, they're impersonating an officer outside their oath, and no one is required to comply because it has no authority. And I believe that Title 26 and Title 12 work together. So it's the bank, the Federal Reserve Bank, that's taxing people calling it a federal tax. They're using federal forms to do it. 
you're filling it out as if you're a federal person with a social security number and your federal address and your your legal name given to you when you applied for a birth certificate and for the state of Texas or state of Virginia, which are the federal lands. And they tell you, you have to fill it out. Well, you don't. I believe that they're working together and they're using the federal forms as a bait and switch because they're giving you a federal form and they're telling you, you have to fill it out. You have to. You have to pay, pay taxes. Everyone has to pay taxes. What they say is they could say whatever they want. It's a lie. And then they switch it from pretending to be federal to being not federal, not under positive laws. And then it becomes a contract. So you're contracting with the federal government under the constitutional contract clause, only they're doing it. They're doing it... Um, by way of deceit. It's a deceitful practice. It's a bait and switch. That's what it is. It's a bait and switch. They're baiting you with federal forms. They're telling you you have to fill it out and then they're they're switching it to a private contract. Because you're not a federal citizen and you're not required to pay taxes. You're not required to pay an income tax, a wage tax. Whatever they want to call it, you're not required to pay it if you're not on federal lands. The states, okay, when it's talking about the states, it's talking about the states that it controls, the state of, the federal lands inside the states. Those people pay an income tax. The federal people inside the state on the federal lands, on the state of Texas, which is the federal lands, are required to pay an income tax. They're required to register their businesses to do work on federal lands as contractors. Now, they've used those contracts and those laws, and they've expanded it deceitfully, fraudulently, to include all of us. And so when Governor Abbott of the state of Texas comes out and says federal, when it comes out and says private people have to do this, He's talking about and can only be talking about the private people on the federal lands. Now, people ask me some some strange questions and they say, but it says individuals. Individuals are on the federal lands. There are individuals on the federal lands. Individual income tax. The individuals working on the federal lands pay income tax. The problem is, is the use of the word state. Because the federal government created federal states inside the sovereign states and it's oil and water, it doesn't mix. They can't come off the federal lands. If they do, they're acting outside of the constitution, impersonating an officer and um, they have no authority. They have no authority when they're acting outside the constitution. None. So if Abbott tries to push his mandates on private businesses and private people off federal lands, then he's doing so without any authority and it's void. Not voidable in court, it's void. Okay? The problem is, is if one person tries to stand up to the federal government, they just smack you down. Try to help Many people understand um, what they're doing and um, why they're doing it and how they're doing it and why nobody has to um, comply unless they're on the federal lands. Okay, so uh, that's all for this video. I think that's quite enough and I hope that you understood what I was saying and if you have any questions you can put them down into the comments section and if I have an answer or if I can find an answer for you I will try and um, you guys be safe out there like share subscribe and I'll see you in the next video